What's up, Law Dogs? Thank you so much for returning to my channel. Today, I decided I'm just going to watch TV. And what I'm going to watch is CSI. And I'm going to watch CSI. I'm going to just take a look and give you my opinion on what I think is real, what's not real, and what could be done better, so on and so forth, just from my standpoint. I also, I started a new Law Dog Insider newsletter. Not really a newsletter, but kind of an email list. And the link's going to be below, but it's just to give you some exclusive stuff, stuff that I may be working on that I'm not going to maybe post anywhere else. I'm still kind of wrapping my head around the value I'm going to bring to you for giving me your email address. And so if you're interested in signing up, link's below or it's in the about section as well. All right, so let's get to a little bit of CSI. Okay, let's check out the crime scene here. Crime scene tape, good. A lot of people inside the crime scene. Where's the logger guy? All right, we got a guy logging in information. That's great. All right, what do we have? A little bitty camera, a little bitty flash. That's not gonna do anything. Uh, okay, let's talk about her taking pictures um, with the other CSI person in the scene. No, no. As we've talked about before, you need to take big overalls, medium size, and then smaller kind of detailed shot. And you don't want a person standing over the body and the evidence while you're taking pictures. That's not the time and place to do that. All right, so let's uh, continue on. Yeah, I'm just taking out money. No big deal. Not logging to hand it back. I don't worry about it. The homeowner's Jim Brass. Is this going to be like the time they didn't know who Drew Carey was? Jim Brass. Let's talk about taking homeowner's stuff out of people's pockets. Now, I've been on several scenes, several homicides where the medical examiner's there and, you know, there's a procedure that you go through to preserve the evidence. But if the medical examiner is going to go into anybody's pockets, it's going to be them because they're trying to identify the person. They're going to feel around for a wallet, maybe get a wallet out and then find an identification, find a driver's license, put the wallet back, and that's as far as he or she is going to go. They're not going to dig and take money out and pass it around and hand it back around and put it back in pockets. That's, that's not common practice, let's just say. Door, Chris. Move fast. Killer had already died. Fire scene. Bleed. You weren't kidding about less to look at. Not even an entry wound? No. Bullet went in through the left eye, out through the occipital bone. Hard to tell the caliber of the uh, bullet. Uh, that's not too uncommon. I mean, you're trying to identify basically the cause of death right out of the, the shoot just to say, you know, what's going to be happening. So that's not too outside of the norm. Just to point, you're not going to stick a pin in their eye, obviously. But um, you do want to kind of identify how this, how this person um, died. So that's pretty common right there. Uh, okay. Is that Danny? He's her brother. They've been looking for him all morning. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's talk about that for a second. Um, let's talk about crime scene security. That didn't happen in this case. Uh, there's no way that a person's going to walk into a crime scene with that many officers on the outside, crime scene tape, and then the deputy or the officer is like following her in and kind of grabbing onto her. That would never happen. It would never get that close with good crime scene security because now it's contaminated. She's actually walking and leaving her transfer evidence into the crime scene. And that's a big no-no. So that's that's Hollywood right there. Okay, that normally wouldn't happen. Okay, let's, let's continue on. Okay, looks like they're doing a grid pattern with some string, which is good because that's, that's how you make sure you don't miss anything is by identifying evidence that way. So laying out strings, naming the grid patterns, um, that that's always good for reconstruction down. later on. It's nice to have a blank canvas for reconstructions. It was a blank canvas for reconstructions. Let me tell you, if my office would have had something like this, it would have been heaven, a full dedicated building. It looks like they got big lights up there, um, all sorts of cool tools. And looks like the floor is gridded out too. So maybe that is to simulate the the fire scene maybe, and they're gonna try to put stuff back in there. 
I don't know, but man, a dedicated spot. I haven't been to too many agencies that have a dedicated spot. I've gone to agencies where it's like you can have the conference room to do a reconstruction, um, and you got to move tables around. So if they have this, that's pretty cool. I've never seen one like this. That's pretty cool. It was a big aquarium last week. He made fish out of foam core. Pobito dolphins, actually. Mammals. He's a lot nerdier than he looks. So this will be the pawn shop as it was at the time of the shooting. Wow. Or kid took it in the eye, huh? Yeah. Killer steps up to the counter here, and bang. Best guess based off the of exit wound is a 22, but it's just a guess. So all these melted guns? Now, um, if he's gonna use a head like that on, on a swivel or on a tripod, what we would normally do is have some measurements, right? How tall was the victim from the shoulders to the height? And you can actually simulate how high the victim actually is based on how tall they are. The entry and exit wounds, that would normally come from the medical examiner's report from the autopsy to see exactly where that exited and what the trajectory is. So was it top to bottom, left to right, front to back, those kind of measurements that you can get to get, if you're gonna do trajectory, that's where you really wanna start is that autopsy report. But this is not uncommon. The tripods are nice because you can, you know, get, adjust the height in there. And then the trajectory rods, a nice little um, simulated head there is great with a rod too. So it uh, looks like they built some counters and everything else in there, which is super cool. I mean, that's a great space to kind of work out of. I was expecting more of a weather beaten, salty sea captain vibe. Gosh, thanks. Am I a salty sea captain? Somebody's been I'm, using I'm this place without permission. Ready? I'm assuming they have a warrant. Yeah, well, right to as break I can be, the sheriff hasn't authorized me to carry it. Well, you can stay back in the truck. Uh, no gun. Or not. I mean, if you're going to execute, let's assume they have a search warrant because there's no exigent, exigent circumstances. They're not chasing a fleeing felon into there. So I'm assuming they have a warrant into an unoccupied building that could be have suspects or some kind of bad guys in it. Normally, they would call patrol. Patrol would come out, a couple uniformed guys, and uh, make entry because she's not, she didn't even have a weapon. And then when, when it's clear, because they're trained in those kind of tactics, then detectives or sort of CSI would come in. So that wouldn't really happen. She's in front with no gun, and he's in back with the gun. That's a little backwards there. Cookie floor. Loose floorboard. He's still like condition orange. Looking for me. It's not really secure. He's not really said it's secure. So. Got something over here. Could be a brewer's yeast from Kelsey Webb's cheek. It Dead is. Body. Dead body and money. Lacerated tissue in the lung. Bullet wound? Nope. Bullet. Guess who was hiding behind T8? Let's go get this guy. Now, yep, they're going to put it on a uh, comparison microscope. Do some 3D. Bingo, match found. So what they use there is uh, they, they took this bullet and they put it on a uh, comparison microscope that could compare two things at once. But what they're doing is they, they're doing some 3D microscopy and once that bullet is documented, because when that comes down the barrel of a gun, it's gonna create some distinctive marks that that barrel is gonna create as that round spins going down the barrel. It's gonna create striations and any kind of identification that that barrel is gonna cause is gonna be really distinctive for that type of weapon. So once they get that, they're gonna upload it into a system called IBIS, which is the Integrated Ballistics Identification System. This is a system that agencies share between each other to uh, document and upload bullets that they find. And what, what that's useful for is for, just like you see in this example here, that if somebody has uploaded a bullet that's been documented well and uploaded into IBIS, you can actually get a match. Now, 
in order to testify to that, you're going to have to have a ballistics expert get both those bullets or, or actually do a hands-on comparison, him or herself. And then once they do the hands-on, they can verify it and certify that those are exactly the same, and then they can testify in court. But it's a very, very powerful system. It's a very good way to document and catch guns that are used in multiple crimes for different agencies. Back to the reconstruction now. From H6 of our grid. Not a section of the grid we ever would have spent much time with, but... They left us one clue thanks to how they got rid of all the rest. Look at what else was in H6. Too wide to be a shoe print. I don't like being in here, Detective Carson. Can't you ask your question somewhere else? Sorry, but it's important that you both see this. What? You see those marks that your walking boot makes? These were found at the spot where the killer took their shot. Wait, what is this? Are you accusing me? Of I think Danny found out you were selling illegal guns. I think that so that is the, the importance of good documentation in the initial crime scene. They did a ABFO in there, so they had it to scale and had enough detail in there that they were able to keep that um, in the back of their minds because when they went back and did the reconstruction, they thought that's maybe where the shot was taken. A lot of Hollywood built in there and on angles and all that. Just, that's, that's a lot to kind of deal with. But... The, the important part is they got a shoe print and the only then the the most important part about having a shoe print is you have to compare it to somebody just because you have one doesn't mean that's your suspect okay you have to have a comparison to somebody else which is what they did with this female who walked in left the same print right on the floor in the contaminated crime scene now in front of the district attorney and wham bobs your uncle match match and it's over so let's let's see how they Continue to wrap this wrap this up. And lit a fire to destroy the evidence. No, no, I didn't do any of this. You tracked through the bleach you were spilling on your way out the back door. And the fire burned the sodium hypochlorite into the floor. There's always something. I just had to know where to look. Becky, tell them that you wouldn't. Tell us, Becky. Why? Okay. Why? Give me your hands. Come on. Why? And that's a wrap. We got your suspect in that case. So um, hope you enjoyed the video and a little bit of walkthrough. I mean, it's, you know, not an active crime, obviously, but it is CSI. But it's always interesting to look and see the high tech stuff and what, you know, explain to you what I think is real and what isn't real based on, on the scenes that I've been to. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, leave us a like in the comment. Um, give me suggested more episodes you want me to watch or different things you want me to watch and kind of uh, react on. All right. So you guys take care and I appreciate you so much, my law dogs. And if you haven't signed up for my email, it's uh, going to be in the link below. And that's just going to be some exclusive stuff that I send out to only people on my list. So uh, feel free to join the law dog insider. All right. Take care, guys.